Hi, we're Richard and Jackie from Early Retirement Wonderlust. And we're really excited because we're packing up for a five-week trip to Europe. We are super excited. This is the first long trip that we've done for quite a while in the van. We've got five weeks in Europe. We are getting the ferry to Santander and then we've got five weeks to make our way back up to Cherbourg. No other plans apart from that. We're a little bit apprehensive about it. We've had a couple of shakedown trips because as Jackie says it's been a while since we've been out in Europe and it's been a while since we've been on such a long trip. We've worked out some of the things we've got to do for our packing but what we're planning on doing now is to just take you through our process. More for our help, because it means that we don't forget anything, hopefully. And it's also like a bit of a military precision in our packing, because we've got such a small van that we're going away for five weeks in. So we've got all sorts of different boxes that we pack things into um, to try and order things for us. The challenge of the trip, it was always going to be a coastal seaside trip. <laughs> up until last week when we bumped into some people on a campsite who recommended a really beautiful Picos de Europe in northern Spain, which is a mountainous region. So we're also having to pack our mountain gear as well, which is a bit of a squeeze. It might not look like it, but we have packed particularly light in terms of food because we're a little bit unsure about what we can take into Europe. We think it's the fact that we can't take fresh food in. So everything here is just packaged food. We work on a system of boxes because we've got shelves in the van and it's the best way to use the space. And the deeper down the boxes go, the less we use the stuff. So from the bottom, we have a, a box of goodies here, which has got the dried stuff in, which is like pasta, uh, rice, noodles, um, noodle doodles, curry flavored. You've got to have loads of those for wet rainy days. So we've got a box for breakfast stuff. Um, coffees, teas, biscuits, cereals and so on and then we have some tin stuff as well. We then have a basket that's easily accessible which has all our uh, condiments and things like that so they don't spill all over the van. A quick solution that we've had is one of these hanging baskets which means that I don't have to interrupt her sleep to make my coffee in the morning so all the coffee stuff goes in there. We always forget shopping bags because obviously you've got to shop in Europe. We've got a long ferry trip, so we are taking some booze with us. Um, it's one day and two nights on the ferry, so we've got some beers and some wine. And because it's such a long trip, we're also taking some washing tablets. And I think that just about covers everything. So when we start packing, we try to be really methodical. We've gone through the fact that we're hiking, biking, and we need beach stuff. So we've got lots of clothes to go in. They fit into a cupboard at the back of the van. So that's not too bad, but obviously we don't have a huge amount of space. So we have two of these crates that we fill with all our, at the moment it's got cycling stuff in and wetsuits and all our shoes. And there's another box that's got all of the bits that we'll show you later. Um, and then top tip, we bought three of these baskets that we just shove all our bits and bobs that we use a lot, like all our underwear. And we've got a basket full of all things medical that we might need and suntans and lotions. And we've got a shelf that they fit in that we can grab things from easily. So yeah, that's it. That's all the stuff that we need to pack for our clothing. We've got loads of stuff that goes in the boot area of the van and in this side locker, which we use for most of our camping gear. So we have um, our thermal cover, windscreen cover for the front of the van. We also have internal covers just in case we decide to go a little bit more stealthy. Um, and we've got internal blinds for that. We have our two chairs, we have a little bit of luxury, um, a hammock that takes up hardly any space at all. Um, we have our awning and we have a beach shelter as well which keeps the wind off when we're on the beach. And then into the boot we have our Kadak Safari Chef 2 which is our LPG cooking system for cooking outside. We have 
water container and funnel for filling the onboard water tank. We have the thing we love the most, which is the Snow Peaks fire pit, and we use that wherever we're able to, and we're not sure whether we will be able to in Europe. And then the absolute essential in terms of emergencies, our wild shower. Uh, it does look like a hose lock weed killer kit. It isn't, it is a hose lock shower, and it's absolute luxury when you can't get to a shower. We always travel with our laptops because we do the YouTube blogging and vlogging. So we've got lots of different chargers and things that we need to make sure that we've got for that. We uh, love listening to music when we're on the way. So we always take our little portable speaker with us. We can take it out on the beach when we go on picnics and things and we just listen to it in the van. Um, Rich is not keen, but I always try and make him play backgammon when we're out and about. And we always make sure that we have got um, different ways of finding accommodation for the night. The two main things we use when we're abroad is either the all the airs um which has just got a comprehensive list of places that we can stop over in an emergency most of them are free some of them might have sort of a five ten ten euro charge we also use the axi camping card which is amazing um it's gone up a little bit the cheapest campsite ranges from 13 euros the most expensive is 23 euros you can only use it off season but it also um includes electricity which is amazing because most of the time when you turn up at campsite it's usually about 30 euros and electricity on top um, and then we just take some travel books with us and reading books our final check that we do before we go is always to make sure we don't turn up at the ferry and we haven't got all the documents we need so two passports they've not got corners snipped off so they're definitely in date and we haven't got children with us anymore so they're definitely ours um, we have got our global health insurance cards because we're going to Europe just in case we, we need to have an emergency and we have to go to the hospital so we don't have to pay out hundreds of pounds and our travel insurance. So I think we're all set to go with those. We've got some travel money, um, cash is king with us. We like to try and spend as much as we can in cash so we know where we are. We're not putting things on card. And that's it from me. In terms of the van, I think we've got everything covered in terms of driving in Europe. So we have copies of, or we have our driving license paper and the actual card. We have a copy of our motor insurance and we've also notified our insurance company that we're traveling um, into Europe. You don't longer need a green card for that. Um, we have taken our V5, I think it is, yeah, a V5 document to show that we own the van and an up-to-date MOT certificate. And we've also got our VW Assist because we rarely have to use it, but when we were stuck out in Croatia and the van wouldn't start, it was a godsend. <laughs> One thing that we haven't done, um, we have tried to do it, is to get the French Crit Air sticker because quite a few of the major cities and some of the surrounding areas won't let you drive through without a charge unless you if, if you've not got the Critair sticker. We couldn't upload the photo to get the sticker, but I've double checked the the region that we're going to along the French Atlantic coast doesn't go through any of the areas that would be affected. Fingers crossed. But if you're travelling to through to the Alps, I know that Lyon is affected, and certainly around the Paris areas. But be warned, it's not an easy process, <laughs> and the forums are absolutely full of it in the fact that it's an antiquated online system and it's really problematic to upload your documents and we just failed. <laughs> the last thing to go on is the bikes onto the bike rack. Now the VW bike rack is amazing but it has one significant fault. I made the mistake of leaving these securing arms on um, over the winter and it was almost impossible to free them up then and actually use them. That one is pretty much fused into place and we can't actually use it. So we keep these um, in the boot, out of the wet, and uh, we only use them when we put the bikes on. The bike rack does lock the bike securely in place, but when we're traveling around a lot, we just like to take it to the next level, particularly when we're parking up on motorways or we're wild camping for the night. And we use a combination of these D-locks and these leashes to make sure that the bikes are securely locked to the rack and the rack is securely locked to the van. You might realize that we're not in the UK. So in the excitement of doing our packing videos, I forgot all the essentials of actually driving the van in Europe. And we're obviously in sunny Spain. It's a beautiful chilled morning. 
So on the van, you need to make sure that you've got headlight deflectors on the front and you need to make sure that you've got a UK sticker on the back. Inside the door cards, we have our first aid kit, we have our breathalyzer, and we also have a high-vis vest for each person that's traveling within the car. Um, and we also have a red warning triangle tucked away, easily accessible and down the side of the seat. For all the latest information on traveling in the UK, please don't take my word for it. Please just check out the AA or the RAC websites that have all the uh, up-to-date information on whatever country you're visiting. Earlier in the video, we showed you how frantic the packing was in the UK and how so much stuff fitted into the van. And this is actually us living in the van when we're on the road. Everything is sort of cleared out of the middle area because we have got a huge amount of space up in the roof. We don't sleep up there, but we do have a board that we can just shove everything onto and put the roof up so that it keeps us nice and tidy. And also underneath the van, the crates that we packed full of our shoes and wires and logs and all sorts, we just shove them under the van overnight. Um, they're waterproof, it doesn't matter. There's nothing in there that's worth anything if it gets stolen. Richard's dad made us a duck board, an idea that we stole from a campsite in Switzerland um, hopefully we won't particularly need it but it's coming really handy when it's really really muddy and actually quite sandy and we put a mat on top of it to try and keep the van a little bit cleaner. Hopefully you found some of our tips and tricks of packing useful. I know lots of different people have their own ways of doing things uh, but it works for us. So in our next video after packing we're going to show you actually how we got here on our first ever long distance ferry trip. See you later. Bye.